Business Hours. Today we're going to review uh, how it is that a tax that is levied on a supplier affects the amount of dead weight loss and incidence in the marketplace. Behind me on the board, I've got a demand curve here and a supply curve. Notice that the original supply curve and the original demand curve intersect at $20 in price and 12 units. When a tax is levied on the supplier, the supply curve shifts up by the amount of the tax and what that does is that causes the, the price in this case to rise to $24 and the number of units sold to drop to 6. So let's figure out what's happened here by examining consumer and producer surplus first. So the consumer at the old price of $20 at the area under the demand curve and above the old price, that would be the original area of consumer surplus. The producer had everything below the price they could sell the good at and above the supply curve. That would be the producer surplus. In this case, you can see the consumer surplus is greater than the producer surplus. What we're interested in here is asking what happens to the size of these two different areas and also we want to ascertain what the amount of government revenue is, the dead weight loss from the tax, and then finally the incidence. Let's go about doing that. Okay, so in this particular case, you see the price rises to 24. So consumers after the tax get this area up here under the demand curve and above the new price. Let's go ahead and figure out what that area right there looks like. Well, it starts at 24, it rises to 30, and along the x-axis it starts at 0, and it goes out to 6. That's a triangle. What we can do is we can use 1 half the base times the height of the triangle to figure out the area. And so the height here is 6, and the base is also 6. So we got 1 half of 6 times 6, 1 half of 36 is 18. Okay, next for us is to ask the question, what happens to the producer surplus? Well, the market price is 24, right? But we have to take out the tax, and the tax amount is right here. In this case, the tax is the difference between the 24 and the 18. So what the producer has left over after the tax is implemented is they receive a net price of 18 and they get the difference between the 18 and their willingness to supply the good down here at 16. I'm going to take that little shaded area. I'm just going to bop it out over here. And you can see as well that this area goes from 0 to 6. And so we're going to look at the area right here. And in this particular case, what we want to do I want to take one half the base times the height. In this case, the base is two, and the height is six. One half of twelve is six. So that's our remaining area of producer surplus. But why is the consumer surplus so much smaller than it was before, and the producer surplus so much smaller than before? The answer is that the government's getting a large chunk of this in the form of revenue. Uh, and we can see this here in the graph, because if this is the amount of the tax, then if the item sold for 24, the producer nets 18, it's sending $6 to the government. And what that means is this entire area between the producer and the consumer surplus will be the government's revenue. Let's pull that out over here. And that's from 18 to 24, and from 0 to 6, but that's just a rectangle. So if we want to know the total revenue of the government, in this case, it's just going to be the tax times the number sold. So that's going to be, in this case, 6 times 6. And the total revenue here is 36. Now, it seems like we've done a lot of work to try to figure out what's happening here, but there's a couple other things that are going on that are really important. Because I've accounted for the green and the pink and the blue area, but I haven't said anything about this area right here, which used to be a part of consumer surplus and producer surplus. That's gone. It just vanishes. There's 12 units were sold before, now only 6 are sold. So what we also need to do 
is we need to think about what is this area right here. That's the dead weight loss, and I'm going to pull that area out. And if I do that, you'll see that it has a this triangle, which is kind of on its side, has a base here from 24 to 18. And it has a height right here from 6 to 12. And since it's a triangle again, I want to take one half the base times the height. And the base is 6. And the height is 6. And that's one half of 36, which is 18. So in this particular case, 18 units of surplus, some of which were owned by the consumers, some of which were owned by the producers, just vanishes from the marketplace. And that accounts for everything we had in our original grid, so we're almost there. The last question for us is, well, who actually ends up paying the tax, or what's referred to as the incidence? And to observe this, what we've got to do is we've got to look at what's happening along the price axis. So here's where we started. We started at a point where the price was 20. And the price rises to 24. So we're plus $4 after the tax. And the tax's amount was 6. So we're going to divide the 4 by the 6. And we can see that from a consumer standpoint, they, because the producer was able to raise the price by $4 out of the $6 tax, the consumer effectively paid two-thirds of the tax, so the tax incidence, as far as the consumer is concerned, is they're paying about 67% of the tax. Now, of course, we want to be able to add this up to 100%, and this will help us figure out what the producer is paying. Before the producer received $20, but now they only net 18 So if I'm the producer, then I'm down $2, right, from what I had before. The tax is $6. I'm responsible for sending that on to the government. I was able to get the consumer to pay $4 out of the 6 but I had to eat the other $2 out of the 6 And so what happens here is that's a one-third, and therefore the producer incidence is 33%, and the consumer's incidence is 67%. Um, I hope that's been helpful. hope you have a great day.